So, before we start, I would like to pray. And I would like to welcome the Holy Spirit to this place. That he can come and fill this place, Lord. We invite you, Holy Spirit. And I ask in you, Lord, that you bring revelation for what you have to say to your people because you are the only one, God, that you can take one message and take to everyone that is here and that is listening in this moment this message and hit them in a different way. I thank you, Lord, for your supernatural love. And I ask in you, Lord, that you let me be a vessel to deliver your word, Father. With no acts and without taking nothing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. So, good evening, everybody. Okay, it's always very, it's very good to be in the house of God, um, to praise Him and worship Him with our actions and with our hearts, right? Um, today my message um, is called Making Room for the New. We are in the beginning of the year. And of course, like always, I, don't, I never take lightly when I had to talk about him and, and, and deliver his word. I seek his presence. Um, and I really believe in my heart that this is something that God wants to speak tonight. Um, The, the main scripture that we have for today is Matthew 26, 69, until the verse uh, 75. Okay. We're going to read the New King, uh, uh, New King version, and it says, Now Peter sat outside in the courtyard. And a servant girl came to him saying, You also were with Jesus of Galilee? But he denied it before them all saying, I do not know what are you saying. And when he had gone out to the gateway, another gay saw him and said to those to, do, to who were there, this fellow also was with Jesus of Nazareth. But again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man, he said. <coughs> and a little later, those who stood by came up and said to Peter, Surely you also are one of them, for your speech betray you. Then he began to curse Jesus, I love Peter, <laughs> and swear saying, I do not know the man. Immediately a roster crow, and Peter remembered the word of Jesus who had said to him, before the rooster crow, you will deny me three times. So he went out and wept bitterly. Can we watch that little video? I would like to share with you a little video for those ones that you have kids that you can see the uh -huh, the Superbook Academy, that's the curriculum that we follow in the Center the for the Kids Ministry. Nazareth. Oh, he will get his due along with all his followers. one of those with Jesus the Galilean. I don't know what you're talking about. This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. I swear I don't even know the man. 
must be one of them. I can tell by your Galilean accent. A curse on me if I'm lying. I don't know the man. Before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will deny three times that you even know me. what that has to be, it has to be a lot. Because Peter, can you imagine Peter denying Jesus? Peter, the one that he walked with the Lord, the one that he was present when he did innumerable miracles. The one that God saw in him a lot of potentials to give it the key of his church. Denying the Lord. And the more amazing thing is that Jesus already knew it, that he was going to do it because he said that to him. And Peter said, me? No, Lord. How many of us, we have been in that position that we feel, we feel that our faith is all away? But suddenly, everybody say suddenly. Suddenly. suddenly something happened that moved your ground and came out of you something unexpected. And in order for the Lord to use you, he had to bring what is really inside of you. Because in the moment of pressure, it will really come what is inside of you. Knowing everything is good. For example, I was thinking either in that. How many of you know, we don't need revelation for that, that to wash our, our uh, clean our tea, we need to use toothpaste. Do you know, I don't know you, but I do it. When the toothpaste is almost gone and, and, and you don't have too much, what you have to do? You have to pressure it, to press and push it and push it. That, that, that the toothpaste can come out, right? In order for you to clean your mouth. <laughs> so it's the same way that God used the pressure, that fire in us to bring the best in us. Because that day, at the end of the verse 75, when he said, and he wept bitterly, right? It was the uh, Peter, he touched rock bottom. But at the same time, it was the best day of his life. Because that's the place when you really can start making new, Come on. Come on. new things. Yes. So for, in order for God to do that in Peter, he had to show him and realize, because Peter said, hmm, me, Lord? No, I don't think so. But God had to show him that yes, that he still has something in him that has to come out in order for him to fill him yes. with the new things. Yes. So in order for to do that, we have to make room for the new yes. and let it go of the past. Come on. Because like Pastor Ray always say, we're never gonna live enter into our future if we're living in the past. Right. We have to start new. So I would like to tell you, uh, I like in the verse, um, in the verse uh, 71, when the girl said to him, this fellow also was with Jesus of Nazareth. It was a girl that she came from nowhere. How many of us, we have been in a situation that we have wounded 
but we don't want to show that part to nobody. And we started hiding it, <coughs> hiding what is going on with us. And, so, and then somebody come to remind you what you don't want to hear. I believe that that's what happened to Peter in this, in, 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 in this verse. But also jump into another, uh, 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 uh. it's not it's the same subject, but the, because I'm going to be going back and forward. I would like to talk about my son, uh, my son Ivan, my older son. Recently, uh, he bought a house. For those ones that you don't know me, I have two kids, and I have two grandbabies, two wonderful kids, and four more that they have been added to the extension family. Um, my son, recently he bought a house, and thinking about the message, he has his old uh, living room, his old dining room, and I was telling him, well, son, you know, wait until you can save money and you can buy uh, your new furniture and all of that. And, and, and I say, don't, don't get in debt. And he looked at me and he said, where is the woman that, she, that she's teaching me faith all the time? <laughs> and he said, mom, I'm sorry. I'm making room for the new. Come on, come on. I don't know how, but I'm going to take all of this out and I'm going to put it in the garage and I'm going to make room for the new believing that God is going to provide me with my furniture. Go ahead, Ivan. And God did it. Amen. So I was like, oh my gosh, Ivan. So thinking about now, about the old furniture that he put in the, in the garage. I was thinking, Lord, because I'm a person that I always like to compare the natural with the spiritual because I believe that the spiritual realm is more real than the one that we can see. That's right. And I compare the garage with our heart. Because how many of us, when you have you're gonna have people come over to your house. You clean the, the living room. You clean everything. You know that look everything that people can see. But you don't you don't take people to go and look at your closet. Come on. Because that is where you have all the junk. <laughs> that is where I throw all my shoes. <laughs> right? So that is what happened. In the spiritual, we cover what we don't want to deal with, but it's necessary. In order for you to receive the new that I have for you, you have to make the decision to receive what God have for you and let it go of the past and take all that junk out and say to the pressure, the present, you know what? I already give you too many times of my life. I don't have time for you. I'm going to leave you there. And now I'm going to receive happiness. So, Jesus, I feel you, Lord. So in order to do that, we have to let God work and process us in the fire, in his holy fire. Amen. There's some moments, like I said, that we feel that our faith is in the mountain. And we think, no, that's not going to happen to me. Listen, brothers and sisters, I'm going to tell you something. And my husband is witness of this. I look and seek the Lord every day of my life that like is the first day. I don't want to pretend nothing in front of you. Because I have been seeing powerful minister, ministers falling down. I would like to, this is out of the subject, but I feel that the Lord is telling me to share this. 
it was a, a, a powerful ministry in Florida that I was connected with them. They had a church of 2,000 people. Awesome word, awesome. But he committed adultery. And God deal with him and tell him that he has to confess that in front of the church. It was a big chaos. I don't have to tell you, you can imagine. Right now, it's a family that he has been restored. He had to go through a process. This happened years ago, like eight years ago. But um, I was attending one of his uh, classes in, ta in Texas a few years ago. And when I talked to him, and he said to me, you know what, when I, I, I submit myself to that, because I take, I took the word of God as a tool of work, just that. I don't take this lightly. The word of God is alive. Yes. It's effective. Amen. It's alive. Yes. This is not just a regular book. Yes. You are the one that has to take the decision if you're going to believe what he's saying here or not. That's right, that's right, that's right. So, maybe you want to say, I, I would like to put, to put an example to you. God wants to bring the best in you. How you grow. Pastor Ray shared something this morning that really impacted me when he said, I cannot give you glory. Right? But I can give you grace and mercy. And when I give you that, I'm going to receive glory. Amen. Amen. That was powerful for me. That really touched my spirit. Because I will tell you, how you acting when somebody is not nice with you? Come on. Come on. How you acting? You don't need glory to love me if I'm nice with you and I always giving you prayers and, and, and checking on you and being very nice. I don't, that doesn't need glory. But tell me how you acting when somebody is not ra acting right with you. Or when you, or somebody come to tell you that uh, whoever come and talk about you. What is, what is inside of you that is going to come out? Mm, come on. When that happened. Hmm. Mm. Oh, that person is talking about me. Hmm, but I know a few secrets about them too that I can tell. Come on. Come on. That doesn't have glory. That is bringing what is inside of you. How do you feel when somebody next to you is blessed with something that you have been praying for a long time? Do you rejoice with that person? Or do you get jealous? Or you started criticizing. That's good. The evangelist class at this afternoon was amazing. And I have to let you know, I have an evangelist heart. I love people. I really do. I have been having multiple sins. I came to the Lord dreams when I see people dying. And listen, if we really take these things seriously. We don't desire this either to our worst enemy. To our worst enemy. I don't would like to see nobody perish. Nobody. This is something else coming back to the scripture. When he, they say to Peter, surely you are, you are also one of them. For your speech betray you. What does that mean? That means that either we want to hide it when we really walk with God, either our speech change. The way that we manage ourselves change. The way that we see everything change. And we cannot hide that. Either if he was denied them, he, he can know 
eh, 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 deny that because he was speaking like one of the disciples. Yeah. That's right. But then he began to curse. Ooh. Do you imagine Peter, the one that he was walking close to God? He was cursing. How we receive that? How we receive if we see one of our brother and sister cursing? Are we going to start, ooh, look at him. He don't supposed to be a man of God or a woman of God. Look what she's doing. Look what he's doing. Instead of going and acting as a brothers in Christ and see if you can be a tool that you can be used by God to lift it up that person, to help that person. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. But we started throwing rocks. Uh -oh. It's very easy to criticize what we don't understand. It's very easy. Very easy to criticize what we don't understand. But then, in verse 75, 74 saying, Then he began to curse and swear, saying, I do not know the man. He did it for three times. Immediately a rooster crowed, and Peter remembered the word of Jesus who had said to him, Before the rooster crowed, you will deny me three times. So he went out and wept bitterly. Just reading this when I was alone at home, I got a knot in my throat. Because I can't, I, I really cannot imagine how Peter, listen, the disciples that were human like you and me, how he felt after he denied the Lord. And he saw him that he was captured and he was walking in front of him. How he can afford to look at his eyes and think, I deny you. I really can, can, can just thinking about that, I feel pain in my chest. He were in rock bottom. He touched rock bottom. He went to the deepest place, the lower place that he can go. But God my king, that he knows all things, he knew the potential that Peter has. And he knew that the lower he was going, the deeper was going to be the foundation. Yes. The deeper. And if the foundation is deeper, there's not going to be any hurricane that is going to come and tear down the house. Mm. So it was necessary. The fire in our life is necessary. Mm -hmm. The holy fire of God in our life is necessary. Yes. The fire is necessary because it's in the fire where all the snakes started coming out and it started running, right? The fire purifies us and makes us clean. Yes. And make us clean. That's the fire of God. Jesus wanted to give Peter the key of his church. So he allowed that it happen. That Peter can confront with himself and see what was inside of him that he had to take it off and he can be pure then and God can deposit in him all the new that he has for him. Thank you, Lord. So, can we read the scripture, Matthew 12, 34, please? In that scripture, Jesus said, You snakes, Jesus, no Rosa, you snakes, you are so evil. How can you say anything good? What people say with their mouths, 
come from what filled their hearts. That's right. That's true. Jesus said this. So that means that every time that we, we say something, it is something that you have been keeping in here and you have been pushing it and pushing it and pushing it. But when the pressure coming, that poof, and then you are like, how in the world? I'm going to put myself as, a, as an example because we all going through process. The one that say no, come on, go to heaven now. <laughs> we all have processes. We all. A few weeks ago, it was something with my husband. I don't know. I either don't remember because I don't keep record. Praise Lord for that. <laughs> what, what was it? And we were good. This, trying to discuss in something, and suddenly something came out from my mouth, and I was like, ooh, what I say? <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, he looked at me like, well, he, he know that I'm, I said, you marry a different woman. He know that already. <laughs> yes, he did. And, and I say, I had to go to my room. I had to go to my room, I had to go, and God told me in that place that I came out because you still have been keeping in high something that happened in your past, and he took me to that place. Ouch. And honestly, I was thinking that I, I didn't have that in my heart. <laughs> I'm telling you this, I, I really pray that you have a revelation in what I'm trying to tell you with this message. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we think, oh no, I got it. But when you say you got it, prepare yourself because it's when you're going to fail and you're going to hit hard. Come on, come on. And I say, Lord, what? And he said, yes. So I had to sit down, pray for me. Put hands on myself yeah. and get fear from that. Yeah. And then when I came out of there, my husband looked at me like, are you okay? What happened? I said, please forgive me. This and this happened, and, and it was because of this. And he said, okay, honey, don't worry. Mm -hmm. So I'm just telling you this example because sometimes we don't understand and the enemy can come and put condemnation in you and say, ha, huh, look at you. Mm -hmm. You are no Christian. You are not a disciple of nowhere. Look what are you doing. But if you know this word that is alive and you believe it, then you can go and apply what is in there and understand that the love beyond comprehension of our love make everything new. And he makes you already new. He don't make you perfect. We are in the process. We're going to be perfect when we get there. Yes. We are citizens of the heavens. Yes. That's right. I'm a citizen of heaven. Come on. I don't know about you. So, <laughs> so there is nothing big that I really can do to deserve the love that God has for me. Nothing. Talking about again about the evangelist class because this has been keeping um, uh, resounding in my mind. Listen, this is not religious. Like, oh, I have to go and work and get somebody because you know I'm gonna I'm not gonna be saved. No, 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 no. You have to do this for love yeah. Yeah. because you understand how much he loves you and how much he forgives you. Right. And when you love like that. You love like that your family, the person, the, the people that there's around you, your friends, your co-workers. Yeah. I have to admit that I have a little bit of problem giving testimony. Because you sometimes you have to be, be careful with it because sometimes you can put yourself in a position that you're exalting yourself. But I'm going to share with you this. It was not in here in my notes. Listen, 
I was working in certain job. This happened here in London a long time ago, like four years ago. And this lady, she came to my mind. It was a lady that she was a white lady. She tried to make my life miserable because I was Hispanic. And because everybody around was crazy with me because of my accent and all of that and you know, and all those things. And, yes. And then the lady went to my hired boss to accuse me that I didn't work, I didn't do what I need to do, that I just was always talking in Spanish. Mm -hmm. And that I had to understand that if I came to this country, right, mm -hmm. I had to know that the, the, the language of this country was English. Well, she, she started a big thing. And my immediate boss, that she loved me in those times, she came and she said, how in the world, Rosa, she, she, she can go, you're so sweet to go, and, and blah, 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 blah. I'm going to put her in a place and say, listen, don't do that. I know what I'm fighting. Don't do that. Because I cannot tell you, it was something that just my presence irritate her. <laughs> I always say, people, oh, they love me or they hate me. And if you hate me, I know what the, the same spirit is not in us. And, as, and, and, and the lady, the, the spiritual warfare were intense. When I'm telling you intense, that one day, I'm not exaggerating, she came to my desk and she threw the paper, one paper in my face. Gain the money that they pay you. Very ugly. Listen, it's not that I was afraid to her. I just say, praise God, I'm saved. Yeah. Praise God, I'm saved. Yeah. Praise God, I'm saved. Yeah. But God say, Rosa, you are not doing everything that you're supposed to do. So I started doing warfare for that lady. I, I decided to go earlier, take anointing oil, anoint all her uh, space, yes. and claim it for the Lord. Give it to me, that's all, Lord. I want her. I claim it for the Lord. Well, to make the story short, this lady, one day, she had almost having a stroke at home, at work. And guess to what office she run? Come on. Guess to what office she run? To my office. <laughs> and I hug her and I embrace her <coughs> and God knows that it was not because I was pretending because I can feel the torment that she was mm -hmm. that lady she was sending her home next day yeah we had to call 911 and everything and getting out of her uh, uh, bathroom she fell and she, uh, 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 she got an ICU. So they were saying she's gonna die. So they asked everybody at work who would like to go and visit her. Nobody wants to go. Wow. Nobody. A person that worked there for many, 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 many years. A ministry went and two more ladies, and I say, I go. And I believe in my heart that my prayer was what did this. When I get to that room, and that lady, she hear my voice, she started moving. And I take oil, I anoint in her, and I pray over her, and I pray in her, in, in her ears, and I say, I forgive you. You didn't do nothing to me. I have a lot to be thankful for you because you helped me to go to my next level. Right. You helped me to go to my next level. I forgive you. Don't be afraid. I made a prayer with her. She cried. And after that happened, that lady passed. 
in front of my eyes. In front of my eyes. What, could I, what couldn't happen with that soul if I take the wrong position? Because she was pretty ugly with me. When I'm telling you ugly, but I'm not, it doesn't matter. It's, I'm not going to take time talking about the ugly. You know, yeah, yeah. but it, it, it was pretty ugly the situation that I didn't let that poison my heart. Come on, that's it. Because that's the only thing that the enemy wants for us. This. Yeah. What is coming from here, from your mouth, is what you have in here. That's right. So that's the reason we have to keep daily protecting our heart. And it's with our actions. Listen, I sometimes, yeah, because what I work to is a lot of Christians and blah, blah, blah. And a lot of people that they, they talk the whole day, the Christianists, what I call the Christianists, in French, in French. <laughs> but they don't live what the Word of God say. But I don't have time to stop with them. I don't have time for that. I just want to have time for my daddy business. That's the desire of my heart. It shows that when we love him. Listen, uh, Pastor Corina said, was saying this morning something about passion. The clue for me is passion. I'm not talking about craziness. I'm talking about passion. When you have passion, it's passion in everything. Passion. Listen, I'm cooking, and I'm cooking with passion. Mmm, this tastes good. You know, if, if, if I'm going to, to buy something, and I'm asking God, Lord, I need to find good clearance, Father. Either for that, I pray, and I find it, and I say, yeah, yeah, thank you, Lord. So, passion in everything. The clue is passion. But we have to remember that this is not a racing. Is resistant, daily resistant. This is not a racing. We have to keep it, keep it, keep it. It's daily, daily, daily. I promise you, I'm not going to keep you too long. So. When Pastor Ray said this morning this, that's the reason I, I really felt that I need to share with you this testimony. Because it's not about Rosa, I didn't do nothing. I didn't do nothing. And you know what? Nobody at my work knew what did I do. Just the lady that they were present. And after a year of that, one of the ladies that they promote her, she came to me and she said, I want you to know that I have been watching you all this time and that you are really impacting my life, woman. Come on. Because I saw what did you do and I know how she was yes. treating you and you never complain. Come on. Because when something happens and we feel the pressure and we feel the squeeze, what we do, ooh, this person do this, this and this and this. Listen, <laughs> people of God, it's time to stop the wanyanya. I don't come know on. how to say that in English. <laughs> it's, it's, it's time to stop the whining. Yeah. We need to grow up. Come on. We yeah. need to act like adults. Come on. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 That one. Yes. <laughs> Listen, if, in your, if you are in your process, in your flesh, to finish it, in your flesh, if Focus. <laughs> if your flesh is not hurting, the process is not making effect in you. It has to hurt. Yes. It has to hurt because it's the pain that is making you grow. You have to feel the pain and you have to keep pushing forward. Like our pa uh, pastor said today too, in the in, in, in the in the in the meeting. Listen. In order for you, if you feel lonely, what are you doing? Are you keeping yourself apart? Yeah. Yeah. What are you doing if you feel lonely? 
Do you know? I believe this because God gave me this revelation years ago. People that get depressed, depression is a spirit. That's right. That's right. For people that get depressed, it's because they are selfish. Ooh. Yes. Because this is a circle. And the devil put yourself in the middle. But the moment that you decided to take yourself from that middle and put Jesus in the middle, the depression go away. And stop thinking about poor of you and think what you can do for other. Come on. For other. Yeah. You don't have money. Go to Walmart, buy a, a, a pound of cookie, bake a cookie for somebody. Come do something. On. Try to pelt to put a smile in somebody else's face. Yes. And you will see how your life changed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Do it and you will see how life changed. Because you don't have more time to thinking about yourself. What depression does? Poor people. Poor of me. I don't want to talk with nobody. I want to close the window. I want to kill myself. Come on. I'm not making fun because I know this is serious. But if you stop whining, come on. If you stop whining and you take the word of God serious, yes. This spirit don't come back to your life no more. That's it. The truth set you free. Yes. That's the truth. Yes. We supposed to have Jesus in the throne as a center of our life. Yes. He is God and God alone. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. So, there is something too that I have been seeing. Praise God, not in this church. Thank you, Jesus. But lately, in the house of God. And I don't know how to say that in English, but it's a spirit that is dry. And Father, I bind that spirit of dry, or I don't know how to say it, Pastor Ray, dry, dry spirit, that put people in passivity, that put you in that passivity mode. Because passivity doesn't have to do nothing with being peaceful. Those are two different things. Being peaceful is one thing and passivity is another. So we need to remove and don't let those things come to our church. Yeah. Don't get focused in the numbers. Let focus in the souls that matter That's to right. God. Yeah, that's right. The number doesn't matter. God wants quality. Yeah. That's right. Quality. That's what we have to give to Him. So I would like that everybody stand up in your feet, please. And I'm gonna pray like, like what happened to Peter, God can bring revelation to us of what is inside of us that has to come out. I know everybody that is here is supposed to be safe, but I don't want to close the altar without making the calling. If you don't know your, the Lord as your Lord and Savior, I would like that you can step 